What's up YouTube, Mr. Lamessi here, and today we're going to go through the Druid Leveling Guide. This is going to be a way to get your character from the start of the game to the end game, where you can then respec into the build that you want, assuming that you are going to play through the game and not just get rushed all the way through or something, which of course is technically the fastest way, right? But if you're playing through, this is the Leveling Guide. So the first thing that we will go over is how we're going to skill this character. We'll be going from a fire druid into a wind druid. That is going to be uh, where we'll be at. We won't touch anything in the shape shifting. And then we can touch a little bit in the summoning if desired. And I think it's usually a little helpful a little bit later on to do so. So how are we going to skill this character? Well, it's actually one of the easiest skilling things ever. You go firestorm, 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 firestorm. When you hit six, you can put a point or two into Molten Boulder. It can just be helpful in some of those tricky areas. Then you can just keep going Firestorm until you hit level 12, where you will simply max out Fissure. Once Fissure is maxed out, you can just keep putting points into Firestorm. If you happen to max Firestorm out, you can start putting points into Volcano, since that is a synergy of that. It is that simple. It's just Fissure everything and you just crush all the way right so you're gonna do this until you get until um act four of nightmare once you get to act four of nightmare your fire damage is gonna fall off a lot technically you still could play through with your fissure druid if you so desired and had over leveled enough and then you could honestly take this all the way into early hell but um for the purposes of this and the fastest leveling at that point you would generally respec start of act four nightmare and you're going to respec into this. So you'll go like this, and you're going to max Tornado. You'll probably be around like level 45 or so. So you can max Tornado. You can max out Hurricane as much as it'll let you. Let's say you'd hit like 16 points at level 45. Then you can put the rest of the points into Cyclone Armor. This is going to be the build, right? And it's just gonna simply work as that. You're going to put on your hurricane, you're going to put this on, and you'll run around and cast your tornadoes. Easy as that. From there, you will just continue to max out your hurricane in 46, 47, 48, 49. You'll finish that up. You should have both these skills maxed. And then you can start putting points into cyclone armor to increase the absorb, as this is an elemental damage absorb. 100%. It's absolutely amazing. Now, if at any point, once you get these two maxed, you feel like you want to have a little bit of extra safety, feel free to go ahead and drop some points like this and get a point into Summon Grizzly. Um, you could actually put a few points in into here if you want to like boost the life up of the Summon Grizzly or whatever. But getting a single point uh, in the Summon Grizzly is very nice. He's not there for damage. He's not there to kill everything. His sole purpose is to just be a big old tank that you can just cast whenever you need. There's no cooldown on him either, so anytime he dies, anytime you need him somewhere else, you just cast it, and he's very, very helpful. You can also run in that Oak Sage if you would like, just to kind of have it somewhere in the back, but it will die very, very quickly often, so that's kind of up to you depending how much you want to do that. So that's going to be your stats, or your skills. Very easy. For your stats, you're going to want to run Vitality pretty much for the entire way, though at levels about 9 and 10, 10 and 11, I like to put 10 points into Strength so that I can wear a belt. That is it. Just so I can put a belt on so I get these 3 or the 12 slots for potions instead of 8 from a Sash or whatever. Um, other than that, though, you shouldn't ever need energy on this character. You're not really going to be needing any dexterity. You might want a little more strength later uh, just to wear, like, your uh, Ancient's Pledge or something. So going up to 34, going up to 45 strength, you'll probably see yourself do. And then everything else will just be in Vitality. You're just going to be pumping Vitality for this character unless you need a little bit of more strength or dex for something that's really nice for the character. Now... Looking at gear, what are we going to look for kind of early on? We're going to start off and we'll look for the basics, right? We're going to go for Stealth, which is Taleth. We're going to go for Nadir. And we're going to go for a Leaf as well. Let me see if I have a Leaf here. Oops. I don't, but that's really quick. I can show you how to get yourself a Leaf. 
So you get a two open socket staff from Act 1 Akara. You can buy them for 168 gold. You go and you get the runes from the Countess, which is Tyr and Ral. And you make a leaf. This is plus three to fire skills. Yes, that's including your fire skills over here. As you can see, it's four, 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 right? So you're actually getting the boost from the staff. It's amazing. It's su such a good rune word. So stealth and leaf are very nice. You could also make an Adir or Tear Tear or Rao Rao or whatever you want in there to get some more resistances or mana per kill or whatever it is. You're going to look for rings that have life and resistance on them. Um, faster cast rate doesn't matter too much for this character. But you'll look for just rings that are like, oh, this has strength and all res. That's really nice. That'd be a good ring for this character to use, right? Something like that. If you can find a belt that maybe has some like life on it, cool. If you can find Hisaris or you can find Blood Fist Gloves, things like that. Life, mana, um, stats, resistances. That's going to be what we're really aiming for. And this is kind of a really nice setup that you could have carrying you through um, all of Act 1, right? Or all of uh, Normal. Once you get to Nightmare, you can start doing some Nightmare Countess. You can upgrade to a Lore Helm, get another plus to skills. You can get that Ancient's Pledge going if you want to have a little more safety. And there you can get into the FCR as well with it. because uh, And even like a 20 FCR wand that you could shop very easily from Akara or from um, Drognan or wherever when you're in Nightmare. Uh, this will be really nice once you get into Wind Druid. Because once you're there then your cast speed actually does matter for your tornadoes, right? So it's actually going to have an effect right there. Um, other upgrades, you know, oh, maybe finding a better belt with bigger life on it, some resistances like these could be really nice. Finding a belt like this that you could shop with big life, I'd be like, oh, that's worth putting a little more strength in to get 91 to life from a belt. Um, you can get a teleport charges staff. Drognan Act 2 is a very easy place to shop this. You can get it at Akara Act 1, both of those in Nightmare. Um, anywhere from normal Act 3 and on, you can shop this. And it just has to be teleport charges, not plus to teleport. That will allow your character to teleport around. In terms of boots, maybe you find some even better boots with even more resistances and magic find and things like that. That can be nice um, if you want, but for the most part, this right here would be a pretty solid character that you could take through. And maybe like, oh, here's a better amulet. 30 life, 10 all res. And this right here, like I say, this would be a, a very nice build. And then you're just kind of looking to slowly upgrade each piece uh, as you go along. So maybe you find an FCR uh, piece that's a little bit better. Or maybe you make a spirit sword. Talthol or Am, not that difficult. Get a crystal sword, long sword, or broadsword from the normal cows, guaranteed to get four open sockets at Larzik. Or you can find one in Nightmare that's already with four open sockets. You can just take that, socket it, put these runes in. Three of these come from normal count, or I mean, one of them comes from normal countess. You could make Ral and or Ort and Thol from the Rals if you wanted. But the, all the runes come from Nightmare Countess. So within Nightmare, you could get all these runes, get this character built up like this, uh, and you'll be in a very, very good spot and can continue to dominate until you get over into Hell and kind of destroy everything there. So overall, I would say this is one of the easiest classes to level. It's very simple and straightforward with how you're skilling just in the fire, and then in the wind tree. Um, and then, like I say, if you want to get a summoned grizzly or something to come tag along and help out, you can just do that. And it's very simple, very fun. You have physical damage from your tornadoes. They actually do physical damage. And your hurricane does cold damage. So between the two of those skills, you're able to take out a majority of monsters that are going to be uh, difficult for you to fight normally. So other than that, I feel like it's pretty it's pretty easy. I give this character like a 9 out of 10, uh, if not higher, for just its leveling. Um, very strong all the way through. You'll have very few issues, I would imagine. Uh, biggest issue usually is just his life pool can be a little bit low without like a good Oak Sage and stuff. So anyways, hope this was helpful. Good luck in the end game, you guys, and leveling through. Peace, everybody.